Hi, this is Travis Shaw with the Virginia Piedmont Heritage Area. Uh, this is our final video for the day as part of our Veterans Day series. And we are all the way out in the very far eastern end of the Heritage Area. We're in Sterling Cemetery, Sterling, Virginia, right down the road from Claude Moore Park. And again, I'm joined by Jim Taub. Now, Jim, it was your idea to come here and look for one particular veteran. Whose grave are we standing at right now? Yeah, we're, sta we're standing excuse me, at the grave of Bentley J. Beavers. Uh, he's a local guy. He's originally uh, from Loudoun County, grew up in the area uh, around McLean and Sterling. And he's uh, noticeable for us because he's a veteran. He's a World War I veteran. Um, and the reason I, I said come here is uh, uh, as a historian and as a Virginian, a unit that really interests me is the 318th Infantry. They are a regiment that was traditionally recruited out of folks from Virginia um, all across the state. Um, they're mixed in with troops from West Virginia and Pennsylvania to create the 80th, the Blue Ridge Division, which in the Heritage area, seeing the Blue Ridge every day, is something that really draws you into home. Uh, I was lucky enough to pick up an original history of the 318th Infantry printed in Richmond in the 1920s, and when I flipped open the cover, it had the name Bentley J. Beavers on the inside. So, so, the camera, so of course, this is my, as a historian nerd, my cool history of the 318th Infantry. And on the inside, you'll see Bentley J. Beavers. And when I put it in, I immediately was greeted with Google results um, showing that he's listed in the book. He served in the 318th Infantry. He was drafted in 1917. Uh, before the war, he was working at a mill uh, just off of Route 66 in Loudoun County. Um, and upon his enlistment, he gets placed in Company C of the 318th, predominantly with men from Northern Virginia. Loudoun County, a lot of guys from Purcellville, a lot of guys from Leesburg. Um, and they're going to be mixed in with troops from the Shenandoah Valley and from the Tidewater to create this greater Virginian sort of regiment. And as replacements and new troops come in, they're going to keep that Virginian sort of identity and ethos, but they're going to have men from all over the United States. Uh, he goes overseas with them and arrives in the summer of 1918 and sees action with the 80th Division on the Somme. They're training uh, behind the British lines. They're training with the Guards Division there. Uh, and then he'll go further south, join up with the rest of the AEF. They fight in the St. Michiel Offensive and famously take part in the first day of the Meuse Argonne, which we talked about in a previous video. Um, he is part of that first stint into the Meuse Argonne, and the 80th Division is just to the right of the famous position called Montfaucon, which a lot of people may have heard of today. It's one of the pivotal positions during the Meuse Argonne Offensive. Uh, and they're in that position from the 26th of September when they start their attack into early October. What's interesting is where I found Bentley listed in the regimental history is he's on the list of wounded that occur at the end of September, early October. And I'm still trying to figure out where exactly he was wounded. Um, once we have the uh, advantage of being able to visit archives and museums again, that's something we're going to explore a little bit more. So he returns to the unit, though, and he comes back with them in the spring of 1919, landing back in Norfolk, Virginia. And he will return home and spend the rest of his life living here in Northern Virginia and retiring out to West Virginia before he passes away in 1968. At some point, he had a collection, and it appears that the family sold off the collection. Um, and from there, whoever purchased it split it uh, apart, and uh, I managed to pick something up that was his copy of the regimental history. So um, it's one of these small, this is a relatively newer cemetery. We have older graves here, but we also have relatively uh, contemporary graves here. But I think it's really interesting as we go around here as well, we're seeing people who took part in these pivotal events and important veterans from our sort of uh, greater uh, heritage area, but also greater Virginia and greater American story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. And to actually have a piece of history that you can tie back to this one individual is just fantastic. I love when you, you're able to do that. Yeah. I mean, this is probably the closest that book has been to him yeah, in a long time. Yeah. Uh-oh. Oh. As you can tell, okay. we're not that far from Dulles Airport. Um, we're in <laughs> Sterling, Virginia now. We're, we're not in the beautiful, peaful countryside of Western Loudy, Loudoun County. We're in um, the the Mordor, the yeah. Mordor like Eastern Loudoun County. Um, yes. But uh, you know, still still part of the heritage area. Um, no, that's just a fantastic story, and to have that personal touch, I think, really drives home. You know, it brings me back to I've seen a number of pictures of the veterans when they returned to Loudoun County after the war, there's a parade in Leesburg, and there's photos of the veterans in front of the courthouse and of, of the veterans parading, and then photos taken a few years later of the dedication of the monument there. And to me, it's amazing to think that Bentley Beavers 
might be in there for all we know yeah um, so that is just a great way of wrapping up today i hope you guys have enjoyed it today um thank you so much jim for coming out anytime if you guys enjoyed having jim today um you will want to tune in on thursday november 12th uh we are doing a kind of 100 years retrospective on Loudoun County history in conjunction with the Black History Committee of the Thomas Belch Library. Um, so we have a panel of historians that are going to talk about the issues that faced Loudoners 100 years ago, including veterans returning from the First World War, uh, including the Spanish influenza epidemic, including uh, women's suffrage, all of these issues that were going on in 1920. We're going to take a look back at that. And so I look forward to talking with you in the uh, yeah, like another day or two. Yeah, hopefully. Can't wait and hope to see everybody there. All yeah. right. Well, again, for the Virginia Piedmont Heritage Area, thank you guys so much for joining us today. We hope you've enjoyed it.